And How are you, Lewis? Are good, good. We're live for another episode of the Blue Crocus Experience here, and I'm joined today by Jeff Glass. Jeff, great to have you on. Awesome. Glad to be here, man. Glad we're finally connecting via video, and uh, hello to everyone out there. So good to be connected and looking forward to this chat, man. Been looking forward yeah. to it for a while. For sure, yeah. No, I'm I'm excited. This is uh, we've kind of seen each other in the in the groups back and forth uh, for for quite some time now. I think I don't remember when we connected, um, but then you know we're both in Apex, both working in similar industries. Junk removal is an industry we both uh, both work in pretty heavily. Um, and yep. you know, you reached out to me a couple weeks ago. I think we've been planning this for a little while, but you reached out to me for a couple weeks ago, shared some some tidbits, um, and uh, so it's great to great to finally talk in person uh, as, as much as you can here in, in 2022 um, and, right. uh, and and just make things happen. So what, I'm, what I'd like to do is for you to give people a bit of an intro into who you are. I know a lot of people know who you are, um, but, but for those that don't, um, give me give me a bit of an intro, give the audience a bit of an intro because I'm, I'm here to learn more about you as well um, into who you are little bit of your experience and then we'll get into some of the good stuff too for some actionable tips people can take away from marketing and you know some of that stuff very good Lewis well when I hear who you are who are you as I hear what's your brand right what's your personal brand what's your business brand so to give some stuff from the top I, I you know I'm, I'm first I'm, I'm a husband I'm a father I have three kids um, very busy as a dad I live out here in a very big country called Texas and I uh, enjoy it here Good people. I've lived in California and Nevada. If you need to edit that from the, the chat, that's okay. But um, no one here holds <laughs> it again. Um, great place growing up, but happy to be here in Texas. Uh, we are Alpha Media Global. Uh, the company is serving uh, clients all over the globe, but we mainly service the maintenance industry. Uh, my background: some of you might know me as a writer, as 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 an author. Um, uh, I, I author uh, children's books, I, I author comic books, and I have a book coming out soon called The Alpha Brand. So I have business books that I've been, uh, business series I've been working on as well. But as far as what I do for the digital marketing space is I'm big on branding and coaching and taking brands and really coming in and serving and helping them become winners in their industry. I've had a background of blue collar. I, uh, I slipped and went to college for four years, which in hindsight, I wish I would have just went into business. And I'm not saying that's advice for everybody. And I don't win a bunch of fans when I say skip college, but that's subjectively my experience is I wish I would have just gone into business. I was raised by an entrepreneur. I have been surrounded by entrepreneurs. Uh, so for me, it was just in my blood. And they, they were all uh, contractors, really talented at building, creating things. And not my talent, but I've grown up around it. I was raised by my grandfather was a building inspector. So I've grown up knowing what great work looks like, knowing what detail looks like. And whenever I was in a business, whether I, um, for a while I owned a cleaning company, I've owned a gutter repair business. Uh, and I've always found myself painting myself into the corner of really focusing in on the marketing side. And uh, so I've done it for about 15 years and I enjoy it, it's constantly evolving. And uh, so I'd say brand wise, I, I'm really a coach. I think that's the way people receive me. Uh, and I just I really, I, I really am into celebrating the victories of folks. So when I see businesses doing well, so it's not about just growing a marketing agency, but really I have an approach of how can I grow, come in and grow that, that client, that business, how can I help grow their business and that's really my approach so you might have other questions but i, I think that's just a good overview of no, I, who love I, that. I love that i love that and we're gonna joe uh joe is hopping in just to, to say hi um jake wiles as well good to good to see you guys appreciate hey, everyone hi. who's listening you know if uh, i just shared this out while you're talking as well um to a bunch of the groups so anybody who's listening in cool. drop a comment you know ask questions too as as you you hear something that, that sparks your interest and i'll bring it up on screen and we'll we'll go through it but that's a that's a pretty varied varied history and i knew i knew you had some blue collar background you actually ran a junk removal business at one point didn't you i did i did my background is i wrote a curriculum out in nevada and it was called the entrepreneur mindset program emp for short mm -hmm. and 
I taught entrepreneurs and for me, I'm always looking for what's missing, what's the problem to solve. And there was not really much opportunity. So when the classes would finish, I was a, I was in the private sector and when the classes would finish, it was kind of like, Hey, what do we do now? What, now that we've learned these skills, what do we do? Go get a job. And there, I mean, there's wonderful things you can learn going and getting a job under the right business owner. You can get some paid mentorship. And I certainly implored that idea with my students, but I wanted to create opportunities. So I created a, a junk removal business. I created rehaul and I presented as an opportunity and I taught a class and showed them how to run a business, but I made it real, I made it more of a visceral experience, like hands on. And, and then we hired people that graduated the course and they came to work for the business. A gentleman by the name of Paul Clem ended up buying the company. Uh, from Regina and I today, uh, he runs it part time. He went back into where I met him, which was in juvenile justice. Um, my program was a mandated program in there. Uh, my background, of course, is a writer. I was also a behavioral therapist by trade. And uh, so teaching just really kind of was, you know, a square just peg and a square peg. Per- yeah. It, and, yeah. And I, I loved it, but I, I'm not a big fan of the classroom setting. My wife knows that. Like, I don't know how you sat in the classroom for, you know, all the years of bigger in college. And I said, I don't, I don't know. I don't know why I was in college in the first place, but I was there, but, I, but teaching was different. And I wanted things to really extend outside the four walls and entrepreneurship's like a lot of things. You're not going to learn marriage in a classroom. You're not going to learn driver's ed in your class. You're you have to get out and utilize that apparatus, whether it's a relationship with somebody, you know, so if you're going to learn about marriage, then perhaps you start dating or you learn trial by fire and you jump in and get married or you, and you know, you drive, um, you know, you get behind a wheel and you learn how to drive. You have someone there coaching you, teaching you. So junk removal was an opportunity for me to teach someone the business. And then Paul became a success story. He's not, you know, the next, uh, big XYZ junk removal company. He's not a, he's not an 800 got junk or one of these larger franchises, uh, which are from your area, by the way, uh, Cameron and, uh, Brian are, are from, uh, Canada with eight, one, 800 got junk. Yep. Um, Cameron's a good guy. Cameron and I, um, connected, he teaches entrepreneurship too. really good plug for, uh, Cameron Harold, who was the COO of 800 got junk is, um, and I'm messing up the title a bit, but it's called "We Should Teach Children Entrepreneurship." Really good TED yeah. Talk. Um, yeah, I'll check it out. I've read I've read the book on on uh, I believe it's 800 Got Junk. Yeah, I've read a few of them as as uh, you know over the past couple of years. Some some really good entrepreneurs came out of that. Yeah, so I, I saw that talk and I I, I messaged uh, you know Cameron and I are connect on LinkedIn. So we were talking. I said, you know, I really think I'm going to uh, take this opportunity here in the states and. You know what your your philosophy on entrepreneurship it's what i teach every day and i'm going to implement that in junk removal did it require a contractor's license in the state of nevada and it was you know for the most part a very low barrier of entry you need a truck a trailer pretty pretty much you know ready to go and then we started marketing and and, and it really what but i but at that time i i learned as much as i was a teacher i was learning as a student that we were building a brand and a lot of the reasons that people hired rehaul was because of the Paul Clem story. He, uh, he basically came from a very challenging past and he worked his way up and, and he ended up, uh, basically, you know, becoming a business owner, changed his life around, uh, stopped chasing girls, started chasing God, um, got to baptize him myself out in Lake Tahoe. So that was a really cool oh. experience. Uh, so it, it was a story, it's a story that I treasure to this day. And, and that's something I really just developed a liking for was collecting stories, right? I write them, but I collect them. I, I love the success stories. I get a, I shared a message with you, a guy that messaged us from apex. I'll leave his name anonymous. Cause I think it's better when he shares his own story, but you know, uh, I met him, I think it was right around day one he was going to an apex event and we connected and. He was looking into junk removal and I told him I, and, uh, and, uh, you know, I want him to take all the credit, but I, I helped name his business. I said, you should change your name. This is what you're going to make. And I just laid it out for him and he's on the phone. I don't know if he's looking at me on, over the other line, like I'm crazy, or I don't know how this is possible. And, and, um, 
I said, you're going to make $20,000 a month, but it's, this is the, it's like getting in shape. Like here's, here's a recipe. Here's the workout. Oh, yeah. 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 The math. I think, I think I know who you're talking about. I'll keep his name out too, but, um, he yes. just, his truck lettered up, right? Yep. He did. I mean, he's, yeah. he's fine with, we share his name, but yeah. again, I'll let him share his own story. Cause it's pretty incredible. Oh, but this is the guy, incredible one. Yeah. a veteran, he literally, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but, uh, remember his post, but he literally flatlined, he died. Right. And, and now he's resurrected and changed his life around. And, and so to me, I just, I think in entrepreneurship, if there's one thing we can teach people. And I learned this when I was teaching my students is possible. It doesn't matter what Lewis has done or Jeff glass has done. If we're teaching or coaching somebody, it's not possible for them. Right. So that is the implicit word when you're teaching somebody, like, I don't care how much money you're making, what you're doing. I don't care that you did it for Paul, Susie, or Jane over here. What can you do for me? We're, we are a bit egocentric um, because we're trying to survive, right? That's how we're built as people. It's like, okay, how does this apply to me? Otherwise, the brain's just not going to remember it. So now that it's real, now that he's hit you know, 20K a month, now it's like, okay, now you can hit that next mark. But yeah, I was just speaking into him and telling him, look, this is... This is what it takes. You follow you follow this recipe. And I, and I don't I don't know everything. I, I surround myself with some really great people. Um, my my web guys are I mean, they have more degrees on the wall than I do. These are engineers. These are wonderful people. But I I, I will tell people at this point, I say, look, I'm going to coach you. I'm going to tell you exactly what to do. But if you're going to work against me on it and I think I'm a pretty nice guy, but I'm pretty straightforward. I'm like, I'm going to tell you exactly what to do. And you don't want to follow it. That's okay. But we're not going to work together. You know, and our best clients, I can draw a line. Our most successful clients are the ones that they follow exactly the recipe I'm giving them for success. But there's things that they need to do. There's uniqueness they bring to the table. But uh, that's a big thing I do in marketing that a lot of others don't do is we give homework to our clients. This is the homework. This is the stuff I need on a continual basis. Yeah. This is not, this is your child. <laughs> I'm just watching it. Yeah. In day to day, right? I'm making sure the diapers are changed and it's fed. But you are dropping off your kid at my place at my office. Here's what I need from you. And when people follow that, follow that, I get messages like I did the other day. That's I want more of that. I want to see because really that's where a lot of people are trying to get in this industry. If we want to talk about junk removal, which we can, is people are at different stages and some people are trying to get from zero to twenty. I have a client that I'm talking to the other day. He's um he's doing 3 million a year. That's he's further down the road. He's been at this for over a decade. He's got a uh, number of locations. It's a different model for him, but it's at, when you hit 20 K mark, the F word kicks in freedom, right? Yeah. And that's what people want to get to. They want to get to be free. This has to make sense or else they're going to go have to get a job again, or they're going to have to do something on the side and lose their focus here. So, yeah. but, uh, but yeah, I, that's yeah, nice. that's, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. I saw the message, and I, I didn't uh, have time to to send it back to you. But it, but it's cool to see that come together for for the fellow you're talking about. Because I was talking to him not that long ago. Um, it, mm -hmm. It's really really sweet to see that come together. We got a couple more. Uh, Marlon jumped in. He's in the UK right now. And Jake, I think I don't know if the Illuminati thing is a is an inside joke with you two, uh, but maybe we'll I, have to chat about that. Yeah. <laughs> that's a fun subject he talk, likes to talk about. We were hanging out in Oklahoma talking about that. I love it. I love yeah. it. Cool. Well, I like you. You know, if people are listening in, I think it's fairly obvious. You know, you bring a passion to this industry and a passion for for sharing stories and and going about things a little bit different. Um, and one of the things that's funny because I was poking around your website after we chatted a couple of weeks ago um, and came across this story, but you also shared it in a few of the groups. Uh, so I'd love for you to touch on the the cake story for those that haven't heard of it and any other you know things that come to mind like that because I'm all about making yourself stand out and not just, you know, hiring a marketer and paying for leads because, you know, that's great. But if you can do stuff as a business owner that makes you stand out, then you're light years ahead of everyone else in the industry. Yeah, I'd love to. That That's uh, one of those anecdotal stories. So people reach out to me. I have different things I'll give like scripts for sales and reviews. And those are, those are free to anybody. I just like to give them away. And if it helps people get a boost in their business, but I, I let people know, even though I'm in the digital space, don't ignore things that are offline, especially that we're working across different generations, even with millennials or the next generation coming up. 
we uh, we want to connect with other people and and what is social media social media is almost a placebo right maybe a level above where we feel like we're connecting with somebody but we're truly disconnected in a way right yeah. and we can we can come back to that on another topic but um so i'm listening to one of these old inventions called cds right and i'm in my car and i'm listening to uh i i liked um positive talks you know i had a friend who was in one of these organizations where he got a lot of books and stuff and i was into his organization but i liked all the positive stuff and i was listening to a talk by a guy from merrill lynch an investment firm and he was given a talk about how he grew his business to a multi-million dollar firm and i'm listening to it, i can't see it so it sounds like it was a very small audience overall maybe like 50 to 75 people uh opened up for q a and a guy in the front is asking him a question kind of like back to the whole possible point he goes well okay that sounds great for you mr millionaire but what about for me like how can this apply to me and and as he was basically getting sandbagged a bit by this guy asking a question he navigated it through very well and he goes i would do this one thing and he goes every time i got a new client financial services i sent a cake to their office with all of my swag on it right my name my cards and he goes i would send it to their office you know and what would happen next was interesting and i'm thinking here and this is my honest response i'm like a cake or this is stupid you know i, I didn't i was not a i not a really enticed by the idea but he's got my attention as far as listening in theory i just didn't know if it would be applicable and i'll get into that in a minute so so the cake arrives people ask a couple questions one what's the occasion right two who sent it and a cake makes its way back to where a break room usually not somebody's desk to eat it by themselves so it goes back to the bake room and now cakes are implicitly a community food mm -hmm. so people are going to call other people in the office they're going to share and now you have the way he described it 15 to 20 people in an office sitting around talking about your business next what happens is the law of reciprocity whoever's in that office or somebody in that office will call and say the following and I'll come back to that. I'm going to relate it to junk removal. So I, I, I decided I'm going to try this dumb idea uh, just to test it. Right. And, and, and this guy said it worked hundred percent of the time. I'm a marketer. Nothing works 100% of the yeah. time. Right. Yeah. Even back then I was still getting started in marketing. This is, you know, you're talking, you know, well over a decade ago. And I owned a, uh, a gutter repair company that I bought and I was working with property management companies. And so I tried this and back then I'm still very introverted, but way more introverted back then shy. So I hired somebody to drop off these cakes and pass them out. So you were doing it to prospective clients, right? Not to clients that you had brought on. Is that right? Both. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I, I had four property management clients at the time. So I sent it to their offices and I also sent it to prospective clients. And sure enough, I got a phone call every single time so they would call and they would say hey um hold on one second hey darling i'm on a call we got, we got company yeah i got company she's okay it. um so i i would uh th th whoever was in charge would call the law of reciprocity would kick in they would say hey thank you you know i uh thank you for the cake what's your business about i'll, I'll brush through it and then the, the next thing you know they're saying hey well can you look at a property for us bingo now I'm going out looking at a property and I get a list of properties. So I grew from four property management companies to 88, not properties, property management companies. One of them managed 94 properties out of Auburn, California. And they, they brought our business from being in Northern California to being in four states. That's amazing. And they paid our business. And how, how long was that time span? You went from four to uh, four to 80? Four and a half years. That's phenomenal. Yeah, they that one client paid us about forty five to sixty thousand dollars a year. So we we basically grew. Um, we went through. Um, this is a tip for people out there. Whatever area you're in, look for an apartment association to join as a vendor, as an affiliate. But don't just go set up a table. Look for a creative way to connect with people. Lewis and I can help you with that. Lewis and I through Apex and our resource. I'm sure you're willing to help with that, Lewis, on how creative ways you can actually connect with people other than just being another fly on the wall but that's what people do is they'll just go they'll set up a booth and you're looking like everybody else you got to be able to stand out and that's what cakes did 
is they help people stand out. So I went through the Apartment Association of Northern California. It's now called California Apartment Association. And I basically got a database by paying 200 to 500 bucks a year, or whatever it was, nickels when it comes to, you know, you amortize out the cost for marketing for over the year, right? Yeah. So, but now it only works if you're, if you're utilizing it. So yeah. I started using it and uh, my daughter's playing. I love and it. I, I love it. I, Jake's, Jake's enjoying the kid as well. Yeah, I, start, I started using it and, and I didn't know what I was doing. I was fumbling through. I mean, back then there wasn't LinkedIn. I would, I would be connecting with these clients on LinkedIn and connecting with their second or third generations. I would be using Sales Navigator on LinkedIn. I mean, there's so much you can do now because the digital world was, I mean, websites were optional back then to be a business, you know? I mean, it's, it, was, it was different. So, but it still works today. And I put that out there for junk removers and the people that have utilized it have had great success. Um, uh, Jaime, Alex, um, there's quite a few. I, I don't remember all the names right now, but people that have shared and have testimonials of how they've gone out and they've, they've you know, basically given the cakes. And they've developed their own style. I said, man, you just got to fumble through it. You got to try it. You got to network. But one thing I learned is by having someone else do it, they'll call the boss and say, hey, thank you. So sometimes it helps, which I did accidentally because I wasn't a fan of being in front of people at the time. And they, uh, and they would call and that's, and, and Diamond went from there. That's amazing. That's phenomenal. Yeah. So, so for those who, uh, for those who are, who are watching, um, obviously we can, we can see the kid, but we've referenced uh, your daughter. What, what's her name? Oh, this is Emmy. Emmy. Hey, Emmy. <laughs> so, those who are listening on the, on the podcast, uh, his daughter is hanging over his shoulder, uh, joining the yep. conversation. Yep. I love Emmy. that. Emmy, I'll catch up with you in 10 minutes. Okay. Love you, sweetheart. Bye. <laughs> oh, my That's phone was awesome. ringing. Things get busy, but uh, I tell the clients, I say, I hope you like kids if you call me because they are they're here at my home office. I have another office too, but I work from home quite a bit. So um, that's the that's the glory of being digital marketers. You get to work from home, right? Work from the beach, as they say, right? <laughs> that's right. <Yeah. laughs> so I, I hope I answer your Kate question. Um, no, yeah, but that's that's uh that was that was good i i love that we're working on um a something and i mean i won't go into it too too far just because um you know we, we're, we're still working it out so I'll, I'll let you know and you know after the season how it goes but something to, to kind of bring a bunch of businesses together here in the local community get them to sponsor some some stuff and then you know kind of all of us um share out share out uh you know what's happening and, and bring bring the community together so I'm, I'm excited to drop that for the group one thing we have done is um, we, when we first started the, the junk removal business last year, um, we basically just bought gift cards, um, or went mm -hmm. to, to stores and said, Hey, do you want to donate a gift card for $1,500? We'll put it up on Facebook as a competition. You know, um, whoever tags for their friends, you know, they get entered in the drawing and then we just sponsored it, um, uh, for the same amount that they, you know, put a Facebook ad up, sponsored it for the same amount that they donated. Got a ton of traffic that way. Just simple little things that set set people um, apart are, are huge. Do you have, do you have any other, you know, anecdotal stories like that? Like the cake? Cause that's, that's something that I'm already, I'm already putting a plan together for some local stuff here. I love the, I love the cake idea, like different stuff just hits different. Um, and people remember you a lot more than just the, the mass emails and the, the cold Facebook ads and all that stuff. Yeah. I, I have another thing. And again, if, if it's one of your clients, I certainly respect that it's your client, but they're welcome to our scripts, Lewis. Yeah. And and uh, our reviews, but those are a couple of unique things that we offer as well as our sales scripts. My sales and junk removal went from about 60% to 95% by just changing up my script. And one thing I did is I didn't offer free estimates. They may sound counterintuitive, but there's a whole script that centers around that theme. Another one was I got reviews about eight out of 10 times and I was getting like one out of 10. So those really help with your business too. So like those are things that translate over into the digital space. Mm -hmm. If you want to be ranking on the GMB, which is now the Google profile, having legitimate reviews uh, really help. And when you're getting those a high frequency from people that are not only utilizing your business, but utilizing your business locally. Yeah. Um, so that's one, but uh, really helping people close uh, sales. Another one is uh, to get involved with nonprofit organizations in your area dot gov dot edu um like salvation army or the uh, american heart association 
find a way to go and bring value in some way to that. And junk removal companies are often, often holding value right in the back of their vehicle, right? You can donate items, you can donate time, you can go and volunteer. So if I was, what's that little logo in the back there? It's a blue. Uh, the Crocus, that's, that's, that's our brand. Yeah, the blue Crocus. Yeah. All right, great. So let's say there was a character that went with that, right? So I would, um, I would go down to, uh, let's say it was, what's your favorite animal? Give me, or kid's favorite animal. Give me one. Elephants. Elephants are the thing, you know. <laughs> okay, gotcha. gotcha. <laughs> That's what we're doing all the time now. <laughs> okay. All right. So you have, a, you have a blue crocus elephant and you and your team and your kids, you're wearing your, right? You're, am I on this side? Here I am. Okay. Yeah. Alpha Media, you're wearing your, your logo and you go down to Boys and Girls Club. You see, you talk to someone there at the front desk, you honor them and say, hey, can I, is there a way I can meet with your board? I would like to uh, maybe volunteer. Um, they love if you donate food or time or money and you go down to Boys and Girls Club and you donate something that's of value to them and you go and you bring like some stuffed animals, some, some elephants and you just go and you're not trying to pitch these kids on, you know, signing up for junk removal. You're just trying to do a good community event, right? Mm -hmm. And... So you go and you drop those off, you give it to the kids and you, maybe you bring some pizzas. You got to make sure it's pre-approved and Hey, we're a local business and we just wanted to come spread some cheer and boys and girls club is big, uh, here in the United States. I don't know about in Canada. And, um, that was one of the organizations I taught my curriculum at. And I can tell you right now, knowing them, they love if people are bringing genuine gifts of some sort. Um, we, we can bring books, you know, here's one of our comic books. I'm doing a plug right here. I love it. Uh, I, I was going to, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. yeah. So we, um, so we would bring books, you know, we'd bring something that, you know, resembles our brand or something we've, we've created. And, uh, so that's, it's a, it's a creative book, but it's also got, you know, alpha media all through it. So it helps like with business, right? So you're putting your name out there, right? So you just immediately open up and here's just some big wallpaper, um, centered around the alpha media logo. So you go to somewhere like that and you make a connection and then you have someone like you or me do a write up, do a nice press release and that press release to get into some tech, not tech details, but more intricate marketing SEO details of like, make sure um, you're writing it um, with strong SEO keywords and you're writing about this relationship between Boys and Girls Club. You start donating maybe 20, 50 bucks a month to Boys and Girls Club. Hey, can I feature your emblem, your logo on my website? You create an outbound link to them. And once this nice article you've written up is done, then you see if that you can publish it on their blog. I'm kind of jamming through some things. Yeah. And I'll certainly share this in detail on another call if somebody wanted, if we have time. But it, it's it's creating a, a, a visceral connection with a virtual connection, bringing those together, right? Yeah. So the more you can hook up with like nonprofits and be unique and bring some value to them, that's going to help you on the SERP. So that's going to help you rank because you're bringing something back to Google that they love to see, which is a great brand that's involved with the local community. Yeah. So yeah. that is to me just as strong as the cakes. The cakes are really good directly to build business and generate leads. But there's a lot of things that are, I'd say different to measure, which is really building your brand. Yeah. And if you're known as the business that gives to others, uh, you're going to get more traction than someone that's out there. That's just trying to make, a thousand bucks or 2000 bucks for the day. Yeah. So, um, I told Matthew Moses this because he has uh, fast act. He's got a fast act landscape, fast act junk removal, and he's got this dinosaur, right? And he's a client like Matthew and I started working together a long time ago. Now he's in marketing and I love it. And, but he had, he had, uh, come to me about a logo and Matt, if you're listening to this, you know how the story goes. I was like, dude, dinosaur, are you serious? Like what the heck does this have to do with junk removal? Yeah. And, and I didn't get it. I missed it. Right. And then I thought about it. I thought, whose attention is that dinosaur capturing the kids? Look, mom, look, daddy, there's a dinosaur. And then underneath junk removal landscape. It's brilliant. Right. Yeah. And I told him, I said, you need to go get a bunch of dinosaurs made, man. Go to Boys and Girls Club, drop them off. You know, you're great with people and go bring some pizzas and just get to know. And then and then on the back end, he does a lot of what we do is know how to do the right press release and blog and feature that information on your website and have it, if they'll allow it, have it featured on their website. Now you have a really uh, good high ranking, what we call a high DR backlink, right? Yeah. 
you're connected with somebody that's that's well known digitally there you know you look up um you know american heart association salvation army they're ranking up there like google will or wikipedia right yeah. Yeah. so i hope that one helps that's another one that i teach people is is to think off off outside the box and and really connect with businesses that are that are community driven and it doesn't have to be boys and girls club it whatever one you think you're going to connect best with or bring value that's the one you should be involved with yeah yeah community kitchens are great that way um you know boys and girls club is, is great um another one that we've uh that we're in process of doing for ourselves um and have have uh helped a couple clients with is um doing a scholarship for a local mm -hmm. university we call it university here college in the states um doing a scholarship and then you get a link from a university like a an edu um domain as well like that's uh yeah that's good it, it's kind of combining that that real world and that um you know that uh, digital stuff together to to really build for your company. So that's that's fantastic. That's uh, I I love the teddy bears. <laughs> we might have to do elephants now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it'll catch on, and then those kids are going to bring it home to their mom and dad. Where did this come from? And that kid's not going to want to detach from that animal if they like it, and that's going to have your logo on it or your name on it. And then it's very uh, very light marketing, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, some people give away shirts. I, I send hats to our clients and, uh, I keep ordering them and I keep running out, but, you know, just showing people doing that little extra, like you said, show people that, that you care. Yeah. So, um, I have a question for you and I want to, I want to hear what you have to say about something, um, is what do you think about, um, marketers sharing ideas, working together as opposed to a lot of trends that we've seen especially in the junk removal space. And, and I, and I asked this with knowing that you and I are, have already had, you know, backstage conversations to this, right. No. Is, is if our goal truly is to benefit clients, bring massive value, raise the bar, bring standards that um, maybe were depleted before, you know, and everybody's learning, nobody's perfect. You don't know everything a hundred percent. I don't know everything a hundred percent. So when we, work together we learn from each other and that's how i've learned a lot i learned a lot from holding meetings weekly with clients we've done group meetings with other marketers we learn from places like apex entourage right we learn from these different groups so what is your opinion on marketers like you and i in this space that's typically highly competitive what's your opinion on us working together uh, i think it's i think it's paramount if you want to to truly and, and i think that's i think across any industry i think you should be um mingling with your competitors and i say that with quotes because you know you and i were talking off air and and you know there's it's a blue ocean out there there's so much opportunity for us as business owners but also there's so many people that need help um and and coming together like i've i've picked up uh, a couple things just from this chat um with you that that we can take for our own business for you know clients business i think it's i think it's incredibly important and something that a lot of people you know when i first started in business you know, three, three and a bit years ago, when I saw a competitor doing something that I was like, oh, that's a good idea. You get this like knot in your stomach, right? Um, mm -hmm. And it's like, oh man, they're doing something that I'd never thought of. Um, and then, you know, what really changed that for me was reading The Go-Giver by Bob Berg. Um, if you haven't read, yeah, yeah, fantastic guy. Um, it changed it from, you know, hey, we, we all have something to give. We all have something mm -hmm. to provide. Let's learn from each other, um, whether it be marketers, whether it be fellow junk removal businesses in our area, whether it be junk removal businesses across the country. I think it's incredibly important to co-mingle, to learn from some of the best stuff that I implement now for clients is stuff that I've hashed out with other marketers, whether it be our advertising campaigns or, you know, mm -hmm. different things that that just come together and, and make it all work. So, yeah, 100 percent in agreement. You knew that was going to be my answer, but to kind of to kind of flesh that out for people. Yeah, I, I wanted to kind of air it out here with, you know, or put it on air here with people because I think that's something that we've seen and we've seen people come in and immediately they just, they want to come against everybody in the industry and you don't need to. Marketers like us, last time I checked, we can work anywhere in the world but two countries. So we don't need to be competing for business. I think we need, and I know we need to be bringing better value to clients that are out there and sharing ideas. So yeah. for example, when I was in junk removal in Nevada, I had a competitor contact me. Um, his name was Tim Doss. Tim Doss is a big YouTuber or was for junk removal, right? Mm -hmm. 
And Tim goes, hey, um, by the way, um, I, I saw that you mentioned moving as a service on your website. You can't do that here in Nevada. And I thought because I came from California, which felt like prison when it came to regulations, it was kind of, you know, free for all. <laughs> well, not free for all. It's too, well, kind of, but more like if it wasn't a regulation in California, why would it be a regulation in Nevada? So I thought, but when it came to NDOT, um, when it came to, um, to uh, I, there were some other ones, um, basically um, certain types of compliance in Nevada were just, were just different. You know, oh, OSHA. OSHA was a big one in Nevada too. So I had moving on there and I took it off my site and he was a competitor. He's like, hey, and, and I met him because I wasn't doing it full time. I was giving jobs. My, I, don't, I want the customer to be taken care of when they called. And if me or one of my students can go out there, I just gave the job to someone local and Tim was in my area. And he was thankful for that because I didn't approach him like a threat. And he goes, hey, man, I wouldn't really tell anybody else this. But by the way, it's like a $30,000 fine to be a moving company. He goes, I have a friend who went to jail. He had his truck impounded. He lost his business. And he's $30,000 less in his life right now because he, um, he posed as a moving company. You have to be approved by Nevada Department of Transportation. That doesn't apply everywhere, you know. Um, there's people that get busted in California, even in junk removal, they can get busted. People don't want to hear that. And it's not a scare tactic, but if, if you don't have a contractor's license and you're doing construction cleanup, then you need, a, I think it's called a D63 license. I'm not a legal entity. I'm not giving legal advice. My experience is my own. I'm going to give you that disclaimer. But I learned those things from competitors, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I learned from a competitor um, and then I verified it with a uh, enrolled agent um, by the name of Dusty Rawlings. He is on my LinkedIn and he could tell you this is that your website needs to be ADA compliant. And I don't tell that to put other marketers down. I don't tell that to scare junk removers or other people in different industries. Hey, get it done. Oh, they look up the law, but it's case law. It's based on so-and-so got sued by so-and-so, okay? Mm -hmm. So when Domino's Pizza went to court, when, um, you know, and Pornhub lost in court because somebody can't read the stories to their show they're watching, these are, I can't make this stuff up. This is real stuff that happened. It pierced the sort of small business veil, if you will, right? We've heard like corporate veil. So once, um, if you ever watch one episode of Law and Order, it's, it's Brown versus Board of Education. They're often citing back to whatever the last case was, not just the law. So people have tried to call me on it and say, well, again, I'm not a legal authority. My wife comes from the paralegal side, but it's not my, it's not my game, not my thing. But it helps to have it. It helps with SEO and your clients can get up to a $5,000 credit each year by having it. Which is so huge. why not offer it? Yeah, and do it, you know, if you're already a client, then, you know, hey, if you have to charge for a couple hours of your time, your time matters, whatever you need to do for us, we just, if somebody's already a client, we just do it for them. Yep. Okay, we add it to their site. It's a plug-in through WordPress. It's very simple, and you're never gonna be 100% compliant. They'll find you for something. That's just the way it works, especially here in the United States. They'll find something but you've done your due diligence of trying to say, hey, I'm gonna make this accessible for somebody with disabilities. Mm -hmm. Your website is your digital storefront, right? So if, if I don't know how it is in Canada, but here, I imagine it's very similar there, but if we took like our grandmothers to a restaurant and she's in a wheelchair, we would expect accessibility, would we not? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, or now there's this growing expectation of accessibility with our websites. Mm -hmm. So I think we should have it. And yeah. I think it's, I think we should have it for many reasons. We should have care for people that have disabilities, right? Yeah. And, no, and, that, and that's something, you know, just to, to bring it back, that's something you shared with me a couple of weeks ago. And I've, mm -hmm. I've uh, told that to a couple of clients, um, you know, and, and we've, we've started implementing that. So that's, that's a pretty big deal. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. The, the form for people who are looking again, I'm not an authority, but the form is IRS form here in the United States, IRS form 8826. It's worth up to 5k per year that your website is compliant. If Lewis is managing your SEO, then it's available in perpetuity because he's managing something that's compliant. Yeah. So I wanna see Lewis be a, a good company, a great company. I wanna see us always, all of us trying to achieve for better, but Lewis is out there in a space for me, with me. Mm -hmm. So the message to junk removers is, and, and it applies to us, Lewis, is we have to understand that we have a business within a business. If, if we are in, we're in marketing, 
but we're in, but that, that brand of marketing itself is losing its credibility. It's losing its credit score. That affects us, right? Yeah. You have a yeah. bunch of, of people that are snake oil salesmen out there trying to do one over, which never happens in marketing, right? You know, facetiously speaking, but you know, and junk removers, you have people that are, you know, got to pick them up truck off of Craigslist. They're doing, you know, and you have everybody in between. So for me, I, I absolutely am thrilled that you're in the industry. I'm thrilled that Blake is in the industry. I'm thrilled that Moses is in the industry. And I want to see more people like you because honestly, man, it helps my brand. I don't mean just in terms of leads. I mean, I mean, in terms of the brand of marketing, because at the end of the day, our clients deserve good services and good products, yep. right? I educate people on Google ads. Once yep. Google ads is set up, you know, three to four months in, it does not take a lot to manage Google ads. That's why marketers love to sell them. Marketers don't like me saying that, but that's the truth. And then you give your, your audience an opportunity, your clients an opportunity that they're not hiring you because you're selling some secret or some secret method. There is no secrets. There's not a lot of secrets in marketing. There's secrets. Yeah. Secrecy. It's different. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. want to hold this back. So then you don't know. So you have to pay me because I know. In a digital world and going from web 2.0 to 3.0, good luck keeping that method because that is going to be out the window when things are more democratized and we move more to a decentralized, I'm speaking your language here now, um, Jake, you know, more of a decentralized, um, you know, kind of like the banking system. That's happening with the internet. So you've got to watch what's going on. We're in a big transition right now from 2.0 to 3.0. So if you're selling, if you look at marketing secrets, it's just going to probably pop up on my Facebook now because I'm saying it. Um, that's the way the, the AI works. And, and to me, I don't, there's no secrets. I don't no. need to sell secrets. I'm not desperate where I have to market myself on secrets, educate clients on what you're doing, how to do it themselves. And then they're hiring you because you're, so you have a, yeah, you have integrity. <laughs> you're the right person. You work hard in time because it makes sense for them. Time-wise, it makes sense to hire Lewis because they're on a truck all day. And Lewis and his partner can focus on building their business, taking care of their baby during the day and handing it back and saying, yeah. look, so I want people to be educated. So anything that I have to offer, there's no secrets, man. I don't need to hold on to those. Our rocket. business is busy enough that we don't need to do that. Go ahead. Yeah, it's not rocket surgery. I say that all the time to clients. Um, and uh, I'm just going to bring up this comment. Nick, appreciate you. Um, Nick's saying one of the top three guests. This, is, this has been a good run. Um, but no, back to, back to, you know, more of us in the marketing space doing well, that helps your brand because more people know what marketing is. Same with jump yeah. removal, same with any industry. Like if we, if we all started underwater basket weaving tomorrow, um, it's going to take a little bit of time for that industry to pick up and people to be aware that they can get baskets that were woven underwater. Right. But yeah, more, absolutely. You know, I, I see people complaining all the time in the groups about, oh, you know, it's, the market's getting flooded. Well, one, do better marketing, build your brand better. Um, and, mm -hmm. and stand out. But two, that's a great thing. That means more and more people are seeing junk removal as a service they can call and hire. Tap into that flow, right? And and absolutely and run with it. Yeah. And in my office is welcome to you too. If you if you're like, hey Jeff, I'm struggling with this client. And and same to you. I'm not saying I'm I'm better at what I do than you. I'm not coming across that way. I'm I'm here to serve, man. I hope you take it that way. I hope the audience oh, yeah. takes it that way. No, I appreciate that. If you call my office, you're like, hey, I'm struggling with getting this client ranked in this area. Um, this website is not up to speed optimization. Um, you know, this client had this question. I didn't know how to answer it. Call me. I'm just somebody who's made more strikeouts than you, man. I've been at this for 15 years, right? Save yourself some time. You should be able to, like Newton said, I've stood on the soldiers of giants. Not that I'm a giant. You're a giant compared to me. You're like 20 feet taller than me. But <laughs> my point is, is that, you know, you're, you're able to draw from people around you. And that's, that's the power of our so-called competitors. I call them strategic partners. Yep. Now, if somebody's coming at you and they're attacking you or they're, they're trying to bring the industry down, you're not my competitor. You're my enemy. I don't want anything to do with you. You're worse than a competitor. And I'm not saying to be rude, but I don't want you associated with my brand. But yep. if you're holding integrity high and you're bringing great value to the business, you don't walk on water. Last I checked, I've only heard of one person who has, but you're bringing a certain um, approach to the business. Like I'm here to bring value. I'm here to grow my business, but grow for others. I want to work with you. I have a vested interest in seeing you succeed because I know if you succeed, 
people in the junk removal industry will succeed. I know if people in the junk removal industry will succeed, it's going to attract better clients, great people in the industry, and it's a win-win-win around for everybody. And I think that's the short-sighted thing that people miss a lot is they're all about, well, how much how much can I, I make for me? Okay. That guy that I, t- I told him how to make $20,000 in a month, he's not my client. He's Moses' client. He's my competitor's client, but I'm here to help him. Does that make sense? And he's he's, he's thanking me. I'm like, he doesn't pay me, you know? Um, And then, and then Moses is great. Moses and I, people are like, okay, well, if I'm hiring you or I'm I'm like, you get both of us because Moses and I look at every single account together. We solve problems together. So we've been able to bring, we feel one of the best Google ad strategies and SEO strategies. Why? Because iron sharpens iron, man. It's a Tuesday, man, and I'm kicking his ass on on algorithms. Wednesday comes, he's kicking my ass, and I'm just telling you how it is. Like, but we're we joke around like two basketball players that are friends, and but we're challenging each other to be better, yeah. and that's that's what people miss, man. You, you got to look at the long term game of this. Marketing is not going anywhere in a down economy, a uh, great economy. That's how it is. So Fair. people need yeah. to pull up their pants and stop acting like it's, you know, a sob story because they don't have this client or that client or they're not number one. Don't worry about it. Focus on bringing value, building your brand, and the rest will come in time. But you got to you got to focus on the right things instead of just. I'd add, I'd add one thing to that: build value, build your brand, um, but build value for other people in the industry. Um, you know, build, yes. build up yeah. the others around you because it's uh, the the law of reciprocity is strong. Or the universe, whatever you you want to call it. Um, people want to help people that help others. And that's so powerful. That's it. That's it. Well, we got three minutes, man. Um, thank you for uh, having me on. We can certainly do a part two one of these days when we find some time. But uh, anything you want to wrap up with before my phone dies and before we call time here? No, this is this has been good. I think uh, people might have to listen to this a couple of times. But just let people know where they can find you. Do, a, do another little plug for your book there. And, uh, and sure. I'll put the links uh, down in the comments uh, when, I, when I put this up as a podcast as well. Sure, absolutely. So my book is Alpha Heroes. Uh, it's based on a concept of our brand, which is Alpha Media uh, Group, which is now Alpha Media Global. Um, it's I teach. I'm a storyteller. I, I teach allegorically so people remember better and they enjoy what they're learning. Uh, we find a lot of enjoyment for it, but you can find it on Amazon. Um, and, uh, and, and for my business, uh, my business is alpha media global or alpha media group. You can find online. Uh, but again, um, if I'm already working with someone in your area, I'm going to refer you over to Lewis. I'm going to refer you over to Moses. But as I get to know you, Lewis, I'm picking up points of why I would refer you to somebody. So this is helping me too. So, um, yeah, so I, I know people know where to find you cause this is your show, but, uh, I I'm thankful for you, man, what you keep doing out there. But, uh, I think if we approach this as a team, everybody wins most of all our clients. hundred percent, hundred percent. That's a, that's a great message to take away whatever industry you're in. And Jeff, this has been a blast. This has been fun to get to know awesome. you a little bit more. Um, some nuggets that I picked up and, and guys, if you're not following Jeff, Connect with them, LinkedIn, Facebook, wherever uh, wherever you're most active. And uh, Jeff, this is this has been fun. I'll, I'll let you know when it goes live, but uh, appreciate you. All right, you too, brother. Take care. God bless. All right, cheers. Bye.